Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ed the Pond Professor and coming to you from Aqualand right now. I'm getting ready to leave, heading down to South Florida. Greg Whitsock, the Pond Guy. We got Brian Helfers, Chris Hansen, myself. We are going down there for Monster Fish Bash, which is a really, really cool event with predatory fins. So while we're down there, we can't neglect Kenan Harkin. He's a good friend of ours. We did an unbelievable project for him last year. We did this recreation pond. He's into conservation. He's into teaching people about ecosystems, habitats, reptiles, and I am looking forward to jumping in that pond, swimming with one of his monster pythons. And while we're there, we're actually gonna swing by and check out his good buddy, Fred's place. The longtime reptile keeper. I've heard a little bit about Fred. I haven't actually met him, but I'm looking forward to an incredible few days. All right, stay tuned for this one. <laughs> I am down in Boca Raton, Florida, and we are here for the Monster Fish Bash. It's gonna be a real cool event. Why don't you check out what's happening here? There's Big Rich, we got Chris, Brian, <laughs> we got our stuff. Displays got Blake's Exotic Ranch, we got raw fishing over on that side. Paul Cafaro is gonna be over here. All of the monster fish right here at Predatory Fins. Good to see ya! Exciting! Blair's a good guy! I love my job! <laughs> Second annual Monster Fish Bash, and we are out here to basically meet fans and get meet people fired up about water features because everybody wants a water feature, and now they're gonna know it. Mm -hmm. we got Tony Burnett and Brandon all the way down. Hey, hey, hey! This place is insane. Incredible. Wait, wait. Did you build this yourself? Yep. Wow, you should be building pods, bro. I got a job, two kids, and I can, I'm getting, getting old. <laughs> You're not old. I'm getting old. So you built this yourself with your dad? You okay. helped it out? That's a pretty good pod, dude. Oh. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> All right, check it out. They are feeding the fish. This is what everybody came for right here. to escape out of that madness. The Monster Fish Bash has been a huge success. Thousands of people come out. We have been slammed the entire time. We've got so many followers and fans. It's great to see all these young kids that are excited about nature. They're out there fishing. They have fish tanks. They're keeping snakes and turtles. This is exactly the type of stuff that Greg did, that I did, that Brian did, that Chris did. So it's good to see this newer generation that's getting in there, having fun, getting their hands dirty, getting out in nature and enjoying it and supporting this. Monster Fish Bash 2019. I, just, I know, I just loved it. <laughs> Unbelievably awesome. Awesome. So many hobbyists, and I love the next generation. So many young kids that were just like you and I, Eddie, when we were kids. It's just so exciting, and they did a fantastic job at Predatory Fish. What a fantastic event. We will be back for sure to Monster Fish Bash. Hooking up out here with Kenan, and we are in for a really good treat today. Yeah, that's that's Ed, fun. and there's hey. Greg. Hey, the pond guy, hey, Greg. Greg. Nice to meet hey, you, Fred. Hey, good to see you, man. Yeah. Welcome to Florida. How are you? <laughs> good are to you? see you. I love when you guys come <laughs> visit. All the way, Bob. Oh my God, he's going. Hey, oh, guys. yeah. <laughs> there he goes. Look at those grappling hooks he's got. Thank you. you got it. And you step up and lock back down. Oh, yeah. I think it would be really cool if we moved that tree and you walked over this guy. <laughs> Me and the dad. That's, that's intimidating. I met Fred in 2004 at a reptile show. Him and his little granddaughter, and they bought some Grandis. He's like, oh, you live in Palm Beach, you gotta come see my place. Yeah, yeah, you got crocodiles. <laughs> and I came back here and I was blown away by what I saw. These are very mature enclosures. I love the plants. I love how the animals look in their enclosures. They're definitely happy.
Look at that guy. Oh, so cool. Look at this snapper. Holy cow. Look at him. <laughs> Check yeah. him out. He's like ancient. Oh, wow. That is awesome. <laughs> Fly River Turtle. That's a big one too. That is a big guy. He looks very healthy. Ooh, I can't believe you can do this. <laughs> Whoa. Beautiful animal. Jeez. So this is what happens when you call Fred's phone. <laughs> so Ed the Pond Professor, what do you think? This is unbelievable. <laughs> Incredible place, Fred. I appreciate everything. Your that, knowledge, thanks your for passion. Coming, man. Incredible, the enclosures, all the all the work that you put in here. Stay um, young. Keep doing it, brother. Yeah, <laughs> all right, Ed, where are we at today, buddy? We're back at Camp Cannon. Always good to on? have you guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, I wanted to show you just what's been happening, man. Excellent. I love it. As you know, I'm a geek. Going to the Crown Jewel. Ooh. Can't wait to see it. It is this. still full sun <laughs> here. So, so intense of an environment as you're going to get oh. is right here. Holy cow. Yeah, it's. Oh it's my beautiful. gosh. It's beautiful. Complete uh. transformation. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But oh. look at this water clarity. That is unreal. This is the ultimate aquarium. I can't tell you how every day I am in this pond and it's no less than an hour. I believe it. A pool, you swim, right? Yeah, exactly. And you get out. Here, we've oh. got a whole ecosystem that I am now privy to. I'm a fly on the wall looking at all these ecosystems. These are the Jeez. adults. And if you look down at some There's of the other ones, There's tons of we've, little guys. We've little got babies. fry oh everywhere. Gosh. And that's when you know it's a success when the fish are breeding and spawning because we replicated Lake Malawi. <laughs> Pretty much. I called the pond professor a couple weeks ago and I said, my lilies aren't doing so good. What do I do? He's like, did you fertilize them? They need so to eat. They need a little bit more nutrition. They have taken off. I, it adds another dimension, providing a couple of functions. Number one, they're sucking up nutrients, Correct. right? Yep. Okay, so they're keeping algae, the free floating algae from taking off. Correct. Just look around, Greg. I don't have a lot of mature trees. I'm hoping to start to create some canopies, some sure. shelter, because yeah. I'm asking a lot of your ecosystem. Absolutely. Ecos but look at the clarity. That's what I want people to understand. The pond's five and a half foot deep. Yep. There is no algae here. If I can provide canopy, that's going to be good. Well, what's a quick way to provide canopy? Water there you lilies. Go. Water lilies. <laughs> Keep it cool. Yeah. Places for the fish to get away from predators. The other thing that it does, it's called periphyton. Different types of organisms, algae, biofilms and stuff that are going to grow on the stalks of the plants. And it's like a symbiotic relationship. It doesn't grow on the rock. It grows specifically on a plant. I've been seeing that. So that, that gives you another layer of diversity, which is good for the fish and it kind of rounds things out. So again, this is an ecosystem. What's it called, Kenan? Periphytes. Per per Periphyte. Periphyte. Per Periphyte. What's yep. up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go look at the wetland. This area has become something of a nursery. That's exactly what it looks like. Look yeah. at all the little ones in yeah, there. Little Holy cichlids. Cow. Obviously, a lot of the fish love to swim in the stream sure. because it's so highly oxygenated. No, I have no mosquito issues. Yeah. No, uh, no. I chose fish uh, that would eat larvae. So some of the cichlids are larva eaters. We're only a few months in. Yep. I can't imagine what this place can look like in five years. It's going to be insane. I love the little urn up in here. It adds a little bit of it does. A little decorative element towards the home, but it actually adds that important dissolved oxygen. So actually, the algae up in here I like is, it. is good. There's a filter called an algal turf scrubber. Okay. So algae is like one of the most amazing plants on the planet. So it'll suck up large amounts of nutrients. But an algal turf scrubber is you're actually using the algal mat to suck up nitrogen and phosphorus out of the water. So it's actually good. This is this is like a wastewater treatment plant. Right. Let it do its job and then you have better, better cleaner well, water. And every into once in a while when that algae breaks off and flows down, the, I notice the fish are waiting for it. Yep. And I chose cichlids specifically because they're algae eaters. Yep. Uh, and they do well here in Florida. Absolutely. So Makes they're, they're gonna be fine. Now we're going down to this negative edge. It was a cool collaboration because I for knew sure. I wanted a habitat. Oh, yeah, check this out. So you came, wow. I came and I did this because my left tortoises were pretty good at climbing it turns out put a log jam because the tortoises that. were climbing up and out 
But I, I remember setting this log right yep. in here. I mean, so the log jam works great. Yes. Just because it's coming off of this, it's like something you're gonna find out in nature. It's really I mean, cool. You notice that ficus, it's gonna grow across this yep. and obscure it and soften. So you see this like vine? How cool is that? It's starting to grow. I mean, it is coming alive. <laughs> This is actually perfect for your tortoises. Yes, I'm standing on top of aqua blocks right now. So this is kind of a dry bed that all of a sudden turns into this wet pool area, increases the capacity for the animals. When you're sitting on the new deck, sitting in the kitchen, you look out across the water, you have that negative edge, and then it just carries your eye all exactly. the way out here, which is gonna be home to the new alligator That's pond, right, which I wanna talk just, about we'll, here. We'll see that in a second. <laughs> uh, but, but the other cool thing about it is when we get heavy rains, which happens often in Florida, this becomes a river that flows into a new pond that's going to be an alligator habitat. The other good thing about connecting these two, even with runoff, is all the beneficial bacteria and all the microorganisms that are living in this established system will are going to them. inoculate that pond. So it's all going to be part of the same thing. Because I'm Aquascape's number one fan, and we have an opportunity, and I need your help. Sure. I am going to be taking on some crocodilians. They're caiman crocodiles that belong to someone just because of physicality and age and he's mm -hmm. not going to be able to work with them any longer. I, I've been talking to you, Ed, about creating a really cool aquascape ecosystem for smaller species of crocodilian. Yeah. They get about five, six foot max. Okay. It's one system, mm -hmm. but there'll be sections okay. that the water flows through, so we'll have different species of caiman. Cool. So there is some grading here. So have that cascading effect where one just connects into the other, yes. so that way we could only have one pumping system, which is nice. How big of a habitat do you think that they the, really the, need from the, a water perspective? Less than you'd think, because dwarf caiman are the ones that um, are gonna need pools that'll probably be 10 foot by five foot. Okay. I don't know how many you've done for crocodilians, Crocodilians, but a handful. Okay, not, not many, but right. a handful. Well, I don't mind being a guinea pig. Uh, I believe in what you guys can do, and yeah. when you got the pond professor on your team, I think you're going to be in good shape. This you know what? Way. It's getting hot. I want to get, get in the water. Let's go. All right, let's go. All right. Oh, there he is. <laughs> that's a full-time job right there. I mean, that's a workout. Holy cow! We have to tune into another video. <laughs> to see what we're going to do with this guy. Nice. <laughs> This is insane. <laughs> it is unreal. After thinking about this and collaborating with Kenneth on this project, to actually see it come to fruition, unreal. I mean, just swimming underwater through all this stuff after we designed it and we carved and put all these big giant boulders into place and now actually see them covered with like a, a bio slime. They're actually coming to life. Fish are in there feeding in the nooks and crannies. We have water lilies that are starting to sprout up from the bottom. He brought in some Sagittaria, which is gonna create this beautiful carpet. As a designer and builder, um, I can envision what this is gonna look like in three to five years. And I tell you what, it's gonna be over the top because the water lilies, the plant materials, the different layers that Kenan has gone through since we built this has been incredible. Not only do I like looking at a pond, but my favorite thing is getting in the water because this is the way nature intended water to be. It shouldn't be sterilized. Sterilized water does not exist in nature. So this is beautiful soft water. There is gonna be some algae and some green stuff in here, but this is like the Florida Springs. This is what, this is the fountain of youth. This is what people came to Florida for hundreds of years ago is looking exactly for this. And we created it right here at Camp Cannon.